this video from Warrior Poet Society. And this guy, he's not a prepper, but he is yeah. uh, in he's a John yeah, he is a prepper, but he focuses more on the firearm stuff. Like he he I, I used to watch him a bunch. I haven't watched him lately, but yeah, he's I think he's he's one of those people that will most not say necessarily he's a prepper, but he's a total on prepper. That's that's kind of what my point was. Yeah, I, I, not uh, not to say that he's not a prepper, but he's not the one. He he's got a different perspective, and that's why I wanted to watch yeah. this video because he's got that. It's he's not talking crap about preppers, but he's not that. He doesn't have that prepper um, point of view where it's you know all gung ho. He's kind of in the middle, and he's realistic about it. He's talks about security and and all sorts of things in this whole video. So uh, mm -hmm. very good video, even though I've only got a couple parts of it, uh, but. Really cool video. So, uh, uh, I, I thought you were going to say there for a second, "Hey, well, that's one of my buddies." <laughs> no, no, I, I, I never, never met know. him. He was up in he was up in Second Ranger Battalion oh, after okay. I after I'd already left. All right. So I want to go through this, and and I think when when he says the three reasons I ditched my bug out bag, I think that's kind of a. Uh, it, not a clickbaity title, but it, there's more that goes into it rather than him just ditching his bag because that title makes it sounds like uh, sound like he's just getting rid of it and doesn't have anything, and and that's not the case. He's talking about the term, kind of like I'm talking about it, the bug out bag term. Uh, you know, solely for a bug out situation is kind of. Uh, we'll just go into it. I'll, I'll play this first clip and then we'll talk about it. The very first reason is is because I'm really hard pressed to find any context where bugging out is the right solution. There are contexts where you would absolutely want to bug out. So for instance, if there was a natural disaster like a hurricane careening toward your house, that's a good time to bug out. You got to bug out. So that's a good, uh, good reason. If Negan and his militia of outlaws has moved into your neighborhood and it is doomsday apocalypse, whatever, now's a good time to bug out. They're going to take over your place and kill you, presumably. So let's make sure we bug out in a few key instances. If you live in downtown New York City in a high-rise apartment building, man, that is a bad place to be in. You should think about bugging out because any place would be better than that. And that's really the idea is where is better than where you're at now folks so i want to get your thoughts on that i i completely agree with that and i think that a lot of preppers actually completely agree with that because to leave all your stuff all the stuff that we've accumulated over the years uh to leave all of that behind and take 20 30 pounds with you <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. i just don't i i don't think that's feasible and there aren't a lot of, and and like he said in there, it depends on your situation, uh, where you live and all that. There aren't a lot of scenarios that involve leaving all your stuff behind, leaving, you know, your, your neighbors, all of that stuff uh, just behind and taking off, running out into, you know, wherever it would be. Uh, so that's that's my thing with the whole bug out bag thing. And it's crazy because bug out bags are like so popular in preparedness too. It's one of the biggest topics. It's bug out bags. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's because well, because most people blow smoke up their own ass, right? Because they they read it, they read a prepper novel, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get my bug out bag and head off into never never land, and you know, go fight the hordes, and I'm gonna live like Rambo and do all this shit. You're, if you leave your house where you have all your stuff, if you don't have another house with stuff, then you literally are downsizing to a thirty pound bag. That it's the dumbest thing in the world, right? Now, like he says, you know, if you have the horde coming towards you, if Ukraine and the Russians are heading towards you and you're Ukrainian, grab your shit and go. Like, have a bug out bag. You have a bag ready to go. I think, you know, what he, he talked in there about the hurricane, right? You got a massive hurricane come on you. What do you do? You get up and, you know, we, in the prepping community, everybody likes the term bug out, you know, but it's really, you're evacuating. You're leaving. Yeah. I, you know, you always see the, always see the people that say if i ever bug out i'm never coming back i'll burn it all that's the dumbest thing in the world situations change you might have to come back everybody has these these definites in their mind oh, i'm doing this nothing it's never changing right you you may come back but it's it's evacuating it's about getting out of the path of a forest fire it's about getting out of all this stuff earthquake happens you need to get out of the area you want to get out of the area right it's so have a bag ready to go be prepared but i don't think it's necessarily a bug out bag it's 
You know, it's a it's an overnight bag that that you intend to stay away for three or four days. You're getting you're going on a trip to Aunt Betty's house is what you're doing. Yeah. Tip. Well, and like Jammer Wolf said, it need a, a a bag with enough stuff to get to my other stuff. Uh, and that could be the situation. You got cash to set up. Some people use the storage locker, stuff like that. I think if you are in an urban area or in a situation where bugging out is one of those necessary things that you really need to think about, I think you've you've probably put uh, planned your whole preparedness plan around that aspect of having to just get the hell out of there rather than the like like he, what he was talking about in this video a lot was the defensible uh, you know, making your area and your community and all that defensible. If you know that's not a possibility and that that getting the heck out of there when something goes bad is what you need to do, your whole preparedness plan better be centered around that because otherwise you just you're a refugee. You don't know well, where you're going. Yeah, that's exactly what you are. Uh, if if you're evacuating your house without a plan and a, and a place to go, yeah, that's exactly what you are. You're a refugee, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so you know and. Maybe that's what you have to do, but, you know, plan it. I mean, are you, are you planning on, I'm leaving my house, so I'm leaving my car? I mean, unless someone watching doesn't drive, right? If you have a vehicle, you're, well, you're not, your bug out bag is getting tossed in your car. Probably yeah. with a bunch of other shit. You're probably going to load it down. So it's driving and it's like, you know, the, the ass end is dragging on the ground. It looks looks like a, uh, you know, a gardener's truck heading towards a dump after busting up a driveway or something. So, you're going to have your vehicle, right? And so I, I I think of the bag, again, as an extended stay bag that I can give. I I have, you know, I have like sort of the, the like the bug out bag kind of stuff that you have packed, like a little, like it's my like little get home bag or whatever. And then I have a bag that when I, if I go somewhere, I always keep clothes in it. I always keep shaving stuff in it. It's all set to go for that stuff, you know. I, I think that's more of what, what it really is nowadays, right, for most people anyway. Again, yeah. you're going to leave everything that you have in your house, house and where are you going to go? Most people don't have a second option to that. You know, the whole national forest idea. Come on. Yeah. yeah. You don't like sleeping with bugs. <laughs> no. It, I love camping, too. I just cannot stand bugs and creepy crawlies and crap. It's just, I don't know. It's always been that way. All right. Let me get to this. The second point that he's making here uh, on reasons why he uh, ditched his bug out bag. We'll just go with what he called it the second most and, and really right up there with it is community recognize that if some societal collapse befell you and really everything around you is falling like a, a callus of cards you would not be able to defend your property for any real length of time without many people helping you pull security even a very, very defensible property. And most people, whenever I go to their property, I'm always in the back of my head thinking, how would I raid this? How would I take this? Because that's just kind of how my mind works. Whatever. <laughs> By the way, I like you. If you're like, if I'm a friend of yours, though I may case your place, I'm not going to actually take it from you. I like you. That's we're friends. All right. So in, in that one, he was talking about, um, the, the community aspect of it. And it, before this segment even started, he was talking about how he's, he's, his, his background is in security and stuff like that. And he was talking about how if you do bug out, kind of like what we were just talking about, if you do bug out, you are basically a refugee. So you, the staying put and working with your neighbors and having all those resources, you can't, you can't do the things you need to do as far as security is concerned if you're out there alone or like if it was just me and Lisa out there, you can't do all that stuff. But if you were at, if you did hunker down and stay home, bug in, I, I get not bug in like going home, but uh, instead of bugging out, you bugged in anyway. But if you did stay there, uh, it would be a lot easier for you to defend that area or, or, or it's possible that you'd have more possibilities well, to defend that area. So, if things are so bad that you're going to flee your home, you know, like we already talked about, do you have a place to go? If not, like you're the refugee, but you're going out into the unknown, basically. And if you have a place to go, right? Okay, I got it. I have another place to go. I, I'm i fortunate enough to have set up stuff so I can leave my house and I got my fortress in the hills. You might have a fortress in the hills, but now you have to go there. Right. You're open. You're exposed along the roads. I mean, you know, it's what's your plan for doing that? So 
leaving your, I mean, your when you talk about place plan, pace plans, your primary plan is, hey, I'm going to sit here as long as possible, right? So what should you be doing? You know, everybody get, we focus on these bug out bags, really securing your home. How I, I would guarantee you the number of preppers out there who haven't ever, haven't switched out the, the screws on their doors, put longer screw, uh, screws in their hinges, haven't done anything to reinforce their door jams or anything like that, which is relatively inexpensive in the big scheme of things. I bet it's like over half, three quarters that yeah. haven't ever done it because of normalcy bias. Oh, I'll get to it tomorrow and all that stuff. Fortify your, your fucking home. That's your primary plan. That's where all your shit is. Even in good times, people come and steal your shit. Mm -hmm. Fortify your home. Make it your, this, my, my home is my castle. Make it your castle. Make it really hard. Look at it, analyze it, you know, uh, deter, detect, delay, deny, defend, all that kind of stuff. Look at it with the five Ds. Try to make people not want to. And then if they do hit your house, have your house so secure that, hey, they bounce off the first time they come up, try to crash the door. So you have the surprise. You have the tactical advantage on them. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it, I think it, he mentions and, and in this next part, if not, the, it's in the video, and I put the link in the description below. But he mentions that, um, <laughs> Jesus, I, it, I'm just going to play that. I'm just going to play it because I just totally drew a blank again. So let me play it. So far, uh, the reason why I don't have a dedicated bug out bag anymore is almost all the context I can think of based on where I live and what I've got, bugging in is far better. And the second thing is community. This is my network of people, my family, my close friends. All those people would come in to a network if the worst case scenario ended up coming about, and that would be my best chances of survival. It's true if you got into the woods and you were alone, you could survive uh, kind of anonymously in the woods for, for quite a while, doing the whole traps and berries and fishing thing. But ultimately, you're going to come across people, and especially as something goes on longer and longer and longer, you're just really, really vulnerable, and it's not good to be caught out in the open. That's why people made castles. That's why people have fortifications and structures. They're easier to defend than just you sharpening <laughs> sticks in the woods. A third reason why... Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what I was going to say was that that's why people build castles. Let me go to this third reason, though. I don't have a bug out bag is really a bug out bag based on the people I have around me. And if you wanted to be able to defend something long term, really a bag is woefully inadequate for preparing for me and my family and whoever else for with any type of longevity. I need a bug out truck and even my truck looking at it, I'm like, man, I can't fit all the stuff I need in there. And I'd really need an enclosed trailer. I'd want a, a, a con Envoy of vehicles with all the resources to be able to actually pull that off the grass is so two points there um one was he was talking about yeah you when you bug out you've limited your ability to do separate different things and that's why people have you know build the castles build these structures and have the fortifications and all that stuff because it's, it's that protection if you're bugging out uh, you don't have any of that stuff or you you have to makeshift you know some of that that stuff little camp wires trip wires uh stuff like that but yeah well i mean and, and here, here's the thing you 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 do his thing where he says you know about bugging out into the woods and you just hang out you're avoiding people and you know eating nuts and berries and fucking rabbits and shit well you're sitting out there doing that while all the people that are surviving are starting to form alliances starting to form things and they're like hey we need to go out to the woods and see where there's food. like you're, you're just delaying the inevitable, right? In, in a lot of ways. Um, and, and, and he's right. I mean, you know, obviously we, we, I, I hadn't watched this video of his before, but it's, you have you got to fortify your home. That's that your home as a defensive perimeter is a force multiplier for you. Mm -hmm. A small group of people can hold off a larger group of people because they have de prepared defensive positions. That's why castles were castles, right? They, they, people would lay siege. People go like, yeah, we're just going to surround you for like two years and hopefully you guys all just eventually die or give up. Right? Because like we can't conquer that. Well, if you're a prepper and you got all your stuff and they lay siege to you, okay, well, as long as they can't get in to get you, you know, time in a way can be on your side. Again, it, it's, it's better having your house all set up. And I think people need to focus on that a lot more than the fantasy land of, you know, bug out, bug out. It should be a get home bag. It's just like we talked about, I think on the other show, it's the purpose of when, when you, when you're, when you have a long gun and a pistol, 
your pistol, the purpose of your pistol is to fight to your long gun or to stay in the fight long enough to get your long gun back in service. It's the biggest casualty producing weapon. Your biggest, most defensive, most best course of action that you have is going to be typically go back is to secure your home and get to your home. And everything should focus on that. Like if things are starting to fall apart back to your 18 pound or maybe a 10 pound get home bag, what do I need absolute minimum to get me home so that I can avoid all these escalating problems that are causing me to have to run home and fortify in place? Yeah. Uh, like Jammer Wolf said here, uh, pick a neighbor that's on board with the best defensive setup and then work together. Uh, I think that's I, I, I think that's more important than the whole bug out thing. The, the knowing, understanding your neighborhood, know, understanding what sort of uh, options you do have as far as security and all that stuff. So, yeah. And also well, kind of to it, close this out, go ahead and I'll, I'll finish up. Oh. Well, and some of the things to do, you know, like, okay, that's cool. And get, get that neighbor. Like John Lovell was talking about there and he says, and, and this is why he's a prepper. He was like, well, I have, he was talking about having a community. He's like, well, people are going to come to me. So what he's saying there, when he was saying that is he has all the stuff set up. That's why he's like, I'm not leaving my house. People are going to come to him and that's his, that's going to be his force, right? That's going to be, Hey, we can actually, some people can get sleep because we can have someone stay up and watch, seeing what things are doing. Um, I'd also say like, you know, fortifying your home doesn't include just like, you know, doing those protective security measures on it. It also means um, getting out, walking around your neighborhood, right? Like get get up from be, in front of the TV, behind the computer, get up from the coffee table, whatever the fuck it is, and go walk around your neighborhood. See where the paths lead. See where things go. See where the storm drain, you know, not just not going underground, but like in, in places you have storm channels and stuff, right? You got, you got part of the rain's system they'll put pathways down in that stuff learn how like where are your vulnerable points in, in your local neighborhood do you know like what points would be good avenues uh for for people to get to your house and to leave your house unnoticed you and bad guys kind of stuff like take take a look around plan like okay how would i attack my house how would you do that like and look at the lay of the land you know walk around come up with a like the best plan you can think of and then go okay well how can i defend against that then it's like, okay, if I have to leave my house, what would be the best way to go if I have to go out the back door? Which which is the best way to go? Yeah, yeah. And that would be the bug out type situation. Yeah. But, you know, with with all of this, I, I think we, we talk about all of this stuff as preppers because I think it is important. And I'm not trying to uh, minimize anything here. But that mm -hmm. the situation that we're just talking about right there is far less likely. I mean, it, in, in our lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite possible nothing like that ever happens in our kids lifetime i mean it, it's it's that rare of a situation for it to get that bad here in the united states on a, a, a country-wide level um i just don't know there's a lot of things that would cause that but on a localized level i think it's more likely but still unlikely so well, every time you go into it every time anybody goes into a shopping mall like you know a uh, wherever a, a store a department store a shopping mall a movie theater whatever it is the first thing you should do is like where are the exits and which way are they right i mean maybe that's just me i always look where, where's 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 the nearest exit and then where are the exits so if something happens over here i know i'm going this way right and so i think you should look at your home the same same way like the chances of people i look at exits because hey if somebody comes in here and starts shooting I want to make sure I get, you know, the best shot to get, get the hell out of here. Well, it's the same thing. What are the odds that you're going to get shot in a movie theater? Pretty, pretty slim. Yeah. You know, but apply that same thing to your house and refine it over time. And I, I, I think uh, one, I think you'll find out, I think if you go walk around your neighborhood and, and, you know, get in the alleys and go check stuff out without getting in trouble, you, you'll find a lot of really cool things in your neighborhood. Right. And then you'll become like an expert on your, like you'll know your neighborhood down pat. So when you hear different noises and different things, uh, you'll have an idea of what's going on, at least where it's going. 